Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. So today we're going to talk about the Evergene game engine. They just released version uh, 2022 point something point something. This is the first release of 2022. So for shorthand, I'm calling this Evergene 2022. We'll get to the details uh, when I get to the release notes. But you may not have ever heard of this one before. And you see it in action in front of you. It's a very polished, good looking, uh, pretty decent performance. Nice graphics going on here. Game engine uh, that's really starting to shift their focus more and more towards... Uh, kind of a VR, XR type environment. If anything, it reminds me probably the most of Stride. Uh, at the same end, this is Windows only. Uh, you can target a number of different platforms. You've got a number of different graphic backends, including uh, DirectX 11, DirectX 12, uh, Vulkan, and I believe Metal coming soon. You can do Open XR, AR, VR, all of that stuff with this, HoloLens, etc. And yeah, it's, it's just a neat polished engine. Now you may be thinking, okay, where did this one come from? Well, actually it is a rebrand. I covered this back in, what was this? November of last year. Uh, they rebranded from the name Wave Engine to Evergene. And I actually did a video about uh, Wave Engine on the while back that I called the best game engine nobody uses. And I, I still think that's fair. This is a really polished, uh, effective game engine. It just doesn't have a huge audience. So I think they're just trying to reposition things a little bit. Obviously, that is part of the new rebrand. So back then, they did a new launcher. And so on the launching experience, by the way, is very polished. Uh, getting this thing up and going, it's very nice to work with. Uh, you can learn more about Evergene itself at... Uh, evergene.com. I'll go back, do a little bit of hands-on, then we'll come back and we'll look at what's new in the 2022 release. So here you can see, again, the editor in action. Uh, it uses entities, uh, as you can see here. So for example, we've got the post-processing effects uh, here. You see a number of different uh, graphical effects can be handled, things like uh, temporal anti-aliasing, depth of field, bloom, all, all of the graphical things that you would expect to be able to set up. They are all here and obviously visual controllable. Uh, and then you've got entities within the world. So you can see here, this guy, this model we've seen here is an imported FBX file. It does support uh, really kind of seamless integration of things like FBX files to be brought in. Uh, otherwise, it is a component-driven system. So for example, if I want to add some physics to this game world, uh, I can just go ahead, let's move this guy off the ground a little bit. Notice, obviously, we're getting real-time lighting effects as we are working with it. So I move this guy up, I'll add a component. So here you can see all the various different components available. You could create your own components using the C-sharp programming language. This does, by the way, require Visual Studio 2022. So you got to be pretty on the cutting edge in that regard. Uh, but you see here a number of different components. Uh, you can create your own here. What I'm specifically looking for is let's just create a rigid body on this guy. All right, so done. We'll create a rigid body control. We scroll on down to the bottom of this guy. Now you're gonna see it has a new rigid body controller built in here. Let's give this guy a mass of 500 kilo. And yes, it's a very light Audi. Uh, and we'll go ahead, we can build and run our scenes. So just in case we build and run for windows like so. Um, you can build for a number of different platforms. We'll get to that when we look at the details in just a second. And we'll go ahead and run this guy. Here you can see the end results and bum, ba -da -dum, bum, bum. Uh, so this is building for DX11, by the way. You can change that in the settings. So there you see. Obviously, I didn't set any physics on the... So I'd also have to set a rigid body um, collider on the floor, a static body, and so on to make it really, uh, you know, a, a better demonstration. But at least you saw how the, the component system works. So basically, you extend the game using or you extend the project using components that you create yourself. Uh, you have access to all the various different other entities that are attached. You can see here there are... Um, hierarchy hierarchical entities here so entities can hold other entities and entities themselves are made out of components so this guy for example has two components a photometric point light and a transform 3d everything is going to have a transform 3d so you can see here multiple different components attached um yeah it, it's a, a very polished game engine if you want to work with something that's uh, pretty mature c sharp based um, but you're not looking or dealing with open source in this particular case. Uh, and there are some um, fees attached, but mostly on just kind of the uh, licensing for support kind of thing. So this is free to use, by the way. The big caveats, of course, are that you don't have a huge community, and they have to compete with the likes of Unreal, Unity, Unigine, and so on. There's just so many game engines in the space. Plus, of course, you've got open source options like Godot that are graphically getting better and better with every release. It's hard to fit into a space. And then they've also got the direct competitor, in my opinion, is still the Stride game engine, which used to be called the Paradox game engine, which used to be called, uh, oh, I'm missing the name. Let's, let's just say it's been renamed a number of times. So this here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 
is previously called the Wave Engine. Now it's called Evergene. Uh, we are talking about today because there was a new release yesterday. So again, if you want to learn more about Evergene, you can come to their website. You can see they're positioning it more for a number of different spaces there. They're really pushing on the... Um, the studios, the add-ons that are available out there, the support that's being added, uh, VR, AR support, things like that. Um, and then, of course, I did mention earlier on, uh, there are the commercial aspects. Uh, I thought they were right here. Maybe I need to zoom out a bit to get access to them. So there is a, a pricing aspect to this guy. Uh, and you see there... Oh, it just scrolled away on me. Okay, a uh, number of major platforms are supported. So all of your mobile platforms, etc., that you want to aim for are out there uh, and also the various different VR things. But the way they do things is basically they're selling you on uh, support uh, levels if, if you want to get um, commercial support and so on. That's what you're paying for. But otherwise, you can use it for free. I don't know where the pricing information ended up on me. Under Evergene Studio? No, I don't think so. Okay, so I've lost track of the pricing, but let's go ahead. We'll go take a look at what is new in this particular release. Let's zoom that in so you can see. So uh, since the 2021 release, I've uh, got a number of new features. Open XR support. Uh, XR is kind of the parent term for VR, AR, and mixed reality. And they're really pushing hard into this space. They support a number of different devices, including things such as HoloLens, Magic Leap. Is Magic Leap still a thing? Um I think that might be the PlayStation. I actually have no idea what that is. Uh, Steam VR, Oculus, and so on. Uh, there's a MetaQuest, uh, which is the Meta being Facebook, blah, 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 blah. Uh, rebranding. So they've got uh, a template for working with uh, the Quest 2 out of the box. So if you're looking to create VR applications, uh, definitely a good place to start. As you see, they're really pushing heavy on this area. Also, the Mixed Reality Toolkit. Um, so this would be more things like your HoloLens. Um, I think they work directly with Microsoft on adding HoloLens support. So that was a big one there. Uh, support for easier remote rendering uh, via an add-on. Uh, we got uh, the new add-on interface was added in for controlling things. Uh, and then they made improvements to their prefab system. Uh, so all our new add-ons are using the new prefab system to share useful entity structures during the development of those applications using those features. Uh, after stabilizing the new prefab asset, we will work on a new visual prefab editor to allow you to edit these assets and export or expect them to be available in the next major release. But if you want, uh, there are more details of the improvements to the prefab system. So you can add entities to the prefab system. You can delete them and remove components from prefab instance and so on. So definitely some improvements to their prefab setup. Uh, reduced standard material time shader compilation in this version. Uh, documentation was improved, which is always nice. And then in terms of what they're working on, uh, more metaverse stuff, MR and VR, um, digital twin adding support for point cloud files, uh, improving our upcoming add-on for CAD file format. So they're obviously moving more and more towards the uh, uh, visualization commercial side of the fence, which make, makes some sense because the game uh, engine market is definitely crowded. Uh, but also uh, adding a new path tracer with RTX as a new render pipeline within the studio. And finally, web platform, uh, adding support for web XR and web GPU technology. So those are things that they are working on coming forward. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is, uh, I'll give you the exact version right now, uh, Evergene 2020 uh, 2.2.16, which is why I called it uh, Evergene 20. 22, uh, just to keep things simple. Uh, so if you're interested, the samples we looked at right there are available. So there is that new one for if you're trying to create uh, for the Oculus Quest or the Meta Quest uh, 2, there is a demo there. They got a demo for ray tracing, the automotive demo that we saw in action earlier on, smart city demo, and so on. So these are all available for download off of their GitHub page if you are interested in checking it out. And yeah, so that is previously known as Wave Engine, now known as Evergene. If you want to learn more about it, it is available at evergene.com. Uh, so let me know what you think of this engine in general. I, I do have to say, once again, in, in terms of actually using it, the user experience is very nice. Now, one thing I do find kind of irritating. So the last thing I did was I added this component and now I'm going to do an undo and it doesn't get rid of it. So I really wish the undo would improve. That's a pretty small quibble on the whole. The, the, the process just kind of works well. Uh, so Ben, you've got uh, importers for bringing things in. They work quite well. Literally drag and drop to bring your models into it. Uh, a lot of components available outside of the box or out of the box. Uh, you've got um, great VR, XR, AR, MR, NR, QR, PR, whatever support coming from this thing. 
Um, so if that's the area you are focusing on, this could be definitely a good pickup. But again, the game engine market is just so crowded that you need to stand out somehow. Uh, and then again, we've got others like Flax and so on. There's just a ton of 3D game engines out there to compete against. So I can see why they seem to be shifting a little bit more towards the MR, VR, AR side of the equation. But let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.